What's up guys, it's MD from Video Games Blogger and I'm going to be talking about my experience at the Microsoft booth at E3 2013. <laughs> Unfortunately, as much as I tried, I wasn't able to play the Xbox One uh, at E3, but I did get a close-up glimpse of the console. I guess the new consoles are having to go a little bit bigger because of the added technology inside. I'm not too sure, but uh, the PS4 looks really big as well. I like how the Xbox controller looks. It looks pretty pretty much the same, pretty much the same size and all that, but it looks a little sleeker this time around, and it's a different material as well. I didn't touch it, but you could tell that it's a different material. And of course, the Kinect, which comes as an accessory to the Xbox One. It's not integrated physically into the system, it's a separate camera, which is one of the main reasons I think that the Xbox One is more expensive than the PS4 because they're actually including the Kinect with it. And for the PS4, uh, the eye is not included. It wasn't a surprise to see that the Microsoft booth was one of the biggest booths at E3. They had quite a few games for you to try out in the booth, and they also had uh, presentations up on screen, especially when they were showing off the Kinect abilities for the Xbox One, which were pretty interesting, but also kind of scary because of how accurate it is and how much it actually reads. Like they were, they had this guy up on stage and it was reading his heart rate. Like if they squatted down, it, the, the Kinect actually was getting like this infrared uh, image up on the screen and you could actually see the muscles that were tensing. I mean, it's impressive, but I really, I don't know. I, I kind of find that kind of scary. Some of the games that I got a, a glimpse of were Project Spark. Uh, Project Spark is an exclusive for Xbox One and I believe it will be for the Xbox 360 as well and for Windows 8. Project Spark was shown off in the Microsoft press conference. What it is is pretty much a game where you could build environments like adding mountains, rivers, towns, uh, all that stuff through voice commands. So you'd be using the Kinect and or the smart glass as well. And not only could you create the environments, but you could also create events and even add characters for your own battling system and that kind of thing. So it's almost like you're creating your own video game. You could start off with a blank map or you could have like a pre-designed level, but you always have the tools to customize the the environments and to add plants and animals and, and all that stuff. It's kind of like you're playing God in this game. Another game that they had at the Microsoft booth, which is not an Xbox exclusive, and I was actually able to play it at the, at the Microsoft booth, was Disney Infinity. When I heard about this title a few months ago, I was extremely excited because I love Disney, and I just love the idea of the little vinyls that it comes with. It's kind of like the Dis Disney version of Skylanders, where you've got those little toys or vinyls that you put on top of a disc and that character that you put on the disc registers into the game and you start playing as that character. So you said these are uh, bonuses, right? Yeah, so these do, uh, this one gives you extra coins, this one gives you extra health, this one gives you extra power, um, there's ones that give you extra speed and damage. And, yeah. Okay, so uh, ex uh, bonuses, skins, and the characters. And and we also have set pieces, which are like um, the Wreck-It Ralph Tower, or the, uh, well we don't have any of them here, but or like a ship, which is like a pirate ship or something. Nice, okay. But the difference between Disney Infinity and Skylanders is that Disney Infinity has, again, the same, the, the a very similar aspect uh, that I was talking about in Project Spark, where you could create your own levels, you could create your own world. You pretty much have uh, the, the ability to just create whatever you want. And you could put them and create your own world and then play through it. So you could create a, a racetrack and actually start racing. You could create uh, just uh, you know your, your, uh, a platformer and start playing that. Now I thought that this was the only mode for the game and I was like, what? I didn't really like the idea. I was like, oh, come on, I want to be given a game that I could play with and then I could choose which Disney character to, to use. But the lady was telling me that there are two different types of modes. There's that toy box mode and there's the play set modes. So if you get these play sets, you don't have to create the level or anything like that. So they're giving you the option of being able to create whatever you want or to to get the play sets so that you could play through already designed levels. That's not the only difference between the toy box and this playset mode though. In the playset mode, they they have specific themes. So for example, there will be a Pirates of the Caribbean playset theme. And let's say you get this Pirates of the Caribbean playset, you can't get 
say, Mr. Incredible, uh, Mr. Incredible Vinyl, and put him into the Pirates of the Caribbean playset. You have to play just the Pirates of the Carib- Caribbean characters in the playset. So they go by themes. If you're if you're going to be doing the playset mode, uh, the Incredibles stay with the Incredibles playset, and you can't put different characters into that playset. But for the toy box mode, you could put whoever you want in there. You could put Mr. Incredible riding on one of the cars from Cars. So they, they you could mix and match with the toy box, but not with the play sets. It looks cool, but the toy box mode is really complicated, especially for somebody that doesn't like to spend all that time creating their own level from scratch. And the playset mode, I mean, it's already, the, the levels and the world is already created for you and, and you have a, a job to do already there, so it's like any other game, but you're limited just to the characters of the specific theme that you get, which kind of sucks because for those of us that don't want to play the toy box mode, but like the idea of the playset mode, we can't play with the other characters, which is what makes this game really cool, that you have all the Disney characters. They also had the Xbox One exclusive Rise Son of Rome. A lot of the gameplay was shown off in the Microsoft press conference for this game as well. The developers of this game are Crytek, they created Crisis. I had heard about this game a while ago and I was always interested, but the thing that kind of pushed me back was that I was reading that it was a Kinect exclusive. Some people were asking the developers if this game was still just a Kinect exclusive. Exclusive, but they kept saying that it it did integrate connect so they weren't saying that it was just exclusive they kept saying that it would that it integrated it for like voice commands because you're this Roman general uh, named Marius Titus and you're pretty much giving commands to your army so if you don't want to play the connect will it still be a great experience or will it kind of suffer uh, I don't know about that, but I do think that the graphics look really good. It's also a heavy QTE. I'm not a big fan of QTEs, especially with a game that that integrates Connect and also Smart Glass. So you could be using your Smart Glass, but that is way too much to have to think about doing for this game. It sounds like it's extremely complicated because of the, the Smart Glass integration the connect and then also you have to be looking out for the QTEs. That just sounds like massive overload that really shouldn't be there. Another game that I just passed by because it's not a title that I'm very interested in was World of Tanks. This is a multiplayer online game. It's free to play but you do have the option to pay a small fee to advance at an accelerated rate. So I think like specific upgrades will be available if you want to buy them with actual money. It's a player versus player type of gameplay where you are pretty much fighting each other with tanks. Another game that I was actually able to play was Halo Spartan Assault. This game is going to be for the for Windows 8. It's a single player top down action shooter. Halo is one of those games that I'm attracted to. I've never really gotten into when it comes to playing, but I, I do think that they have a pretty good story going on and all that. So I played maybe like five minutes of this game and I seriously did not like it. I don't know if it's because I'm not a big fan of tablet gaming just yet. My brother is a pretty big Halo fan and he has played the games uh, and he tried it out as well and he didn't like it either. Maybe we needed some more exposure to it or maybe it would have helped if someone had come and actually told us what we were supposed to do and like the the controls and all that uh, for us to actually like it. But with what we experienced, I really wasn't interested. I also got to play Max the Curse of Brotherhood. The trailer for this game was also premiered at the Microsoft press conference. This game is an Xbox Live arcade game. It looks interesting. I got to play about 10 minutes of it but the weird thing was that I never encountered a complication or any kind of puzzle or an enemy nothing it was just like me getting from point A to point B so I was like okay does this get more complicated later on because I know that it is a puzzle type of game because this is a sequel to Max and the Magic Marker but for me to be playing a game for 10 minutes and not encounter anything that really gave me the idea of there being a purpose to this game is kind of weird to me. So I lost interest pretty fast. I mean, the the environments are really nice. I really love the graphics. It reminded me a little bit of Limbo. And a lot of people are saying that it's been inspired by the PC and PlayStation classic Heart of Darkness. I mean, I'm sure that this game 
game does integrate like bad guys and, and, and puzzles, but I think it's probably a very slow game because I didn't encounter any of that in, in the 10 minutes that I played. Next is probably the most exciting game for me in the Microsoft booth, Fable Anniversary. And I actually started talking to someone from Lionhead Studios, which was super awesome because I love these guys. I'm a huge Fable fan. I've played all of the Fable titles. So I was like, what is this? What they're doing is pretty much remastering Fable and they're adding a, a lot of really cool stuff to it. I didn't play Fable on launch. I played it like a little bit before Fable 2 because I was really interested in the way that Fable 2 looked like. So I was like, I want to play Fable first. And it looked, it just looked really bad. It was full of glitches. So I was like, oh man, this sucks. But I really loved the story and all that. And the, the Lionhead Studios rep was telling me that they had gotten so many requests from people, from fans saying, when are you going to remaster Fable? When are you going to redo Fable? So they finally decided to do it. Not only are they updating the graphics to 1080p HD, but they also integrated a brand new interface and a save system. What this interface, what this new interface does is it allows you to explore the world uh, faster and easier. So I got a good uh, feel for it. I played, I played it for a little while and it does look so much more improved and it just flows better. It feels like you're playing like Fable 2 or Fable 3. So I'm definitely gonna be getting it because I would love to play Fable again and not have to go through the, the glitches that I went through in my first experience. The load times are a lot faster now and the, this new uh, saving system, you could save wherever you want, which is <laughs> a plus for me. I always love that. They added achievements for the first time. They're including a thousand achievement points. And they're also integrating that smart glass. I'm not very used to using a, a tablet or, or a, smart, a smart glass device on the side while I'm playing a game. But with what he was telling me with the smart glass, it sounds like something that I've I have mentioned in the past that I wouldn't mind using uh, like a tablet while playing. And that is using your tablet as like a strategy guide. They're working with Prima, the, the company that makes a lot of strategy guides. They have the option of having your map on the screen. You could pretty much see the whole area that you're walking through. You could see where the enemies are. You could see where the chests are uh, for you to loot items and stuff like that. And he said that if you don't want to see where the chests are, then you could always just take that option off. And they and the, the chest will disappear and you'll just have the map. So I think that's a really cool option to have on the side because I, I hate having to pause the, the game and then look at the map and then pause again and then like that. You, you, you do have your, your little small small map up, up on the corner, but you could only see so far. You can also look at screenshots of the original Fable so you can compare them to your, what you experience on the game so you can see just how different the visuals are nice. of Fable Anniversary. You can uh, see where your quest objectives are here represented by the gold, gold seal. You can have a look on the screen. And then for the real Fable fans, we know that they love a bit of trivia, they love yeah. a bit of backstory. So you can click on Twinblade, one of our boss characters, get a really nice uh, like bit of fiction own. that you know isn't actually in the game itself. So That's yeah, awesome. very cool. So it just makes things a little bit easier by having it on your tablet and be having the option of like moving it around and including other things and stuff like that. So that's what they're doing with Fable Anniversary. I definitely want to get it because I never got the, the physical copy of Fable. I had to download it on, the, on Xbox Live. And again, like I said, I had some problems with that version. So if you haven't played Fable before, I'd say this is the one to get because of how remastered it is and how awesome it looks and the added achievements and all that good stuff. So yeah, that will be coming out this holiday season for the Xbox 360. And before you ask, I did ask about Fable 4. I asked if there was any chance that we would be seeing a Fable 4 sometime in the near future. He gave me the smile, stayed quiet for a second, and then said, we're focusing on this Fable anniversary right now. So I, I'm hoping that that smile was an indication that they do have plans on making a Fable 4. When? Who knows? But as long as they do have those plans, that's awesome. So yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to the Microsoft booth at E3 2013. Let me know what you think about the games that I mentioned or any other Xbox exclusive that I didn't mention in the comments down below and I'll talk to you guys later.